I have a brutal truth for you. If you want to save money in our car crash of a world going forward, you're going to have to make sacrifices. And the first thing you're going to have to sacrifice is convenience. That means you're going to have to find ways to do things the long way round because when things are more expensive, it's usually because you are paying for the convenience. So when you buy bagged salad, ready meals, pre-made coffee in a can, you are paying a premium for that because you are paying for the convenience of not having to put any of the effort in. If you want to save money, you're going to have to go back to learning how to cook, to buying full-sized real vegetables and cutting them up yourself and preparing them. You could learn how to make bread. You can do all sorts of things that don't involve convenience and will actually save you money. Slow living is not a bad thing. You might have to sacrifice next day delivery or delivery at all. Can you go and pick things up? Can you go into a shop and buy them instead? Can you get them second hand? Can you make them? Can you DIY them? There are so many possibilities for ways you can do things that will save you money. So when people say to me, how do you save so much money on your food shop? There are several things I do. The first one is I never buy online. I always go to a shop and I buy it. The second thing I do is I go to the shop when it's having its sales. So I don't drive to a shop and just buy the first thing on the shelf that is the thing I want. I go to the shop at a certain time when they are discounting things and I look for the discounts. And I buy the discounts I want or I need and then I look at what I've got and I scratch cook. And that means making things from, things from scratch from what I've got. And that saves me an enormous amount of money. By cutting out the convenience in my food shop, I have so far this year, as of the end of August, saved myself £695. I mean, that kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Another thing, if you want to save money on your grocery bills, you're just going to have to stop buying things that you don't need. You don't need bottled water. You don't need to buy bottled fizzy drinks. You don't need to buy crisps. Buy what you need that's not killing you. A lot of this pre-packaged food, especially the long life stuff, is designed to keep you hooked. And it's not doing your body any favours. And it's expensive. If you cut it out and eat properly, you will save a fortune. So I know that people will be thinking, well, why should I? Why should I have to change my lifestyle because the cost of living, because the prices are going up? And that's fine if you can afford it. If your income is outpacing your spending and you're happy to spend your money on those things, go for it. But if it's putting you into debt, why would you continue to allow companies to take your money unnecessarily? Now I know this makes life uninteresting and I know that a lot of us have been brought up or brainwashed into believing that iPhones, Starbucks coffee and Friday night down the pub are a, um, a right of life, that this is, these are all things that you, you need, but they're not, they're wants. And you need to differentiate between what is a want, what is a need, how much money you have coming in, how much money you have going out, and if those numbers don't balance, whether you are happy for companies to put you into debt. Because right now, no one's getting you out of debt. Credit card companies like you being in debt because it means you're giving them extra money every month. That's how they make a living. And 
I live quite a frugal lifestyle. I don't feel deprived. I don't miss, I mean, I haven't had a takeaway in years, but I don't miss that stuff because I realise that it's, it's, it's all a rip off. It's designed to keep you hooked. It's designed to keep you addicted so that you find it impossible to let go of. And I've recently been ditching sugar as much as I can and I've noticed like a difference in me. I'm more alert, I have more energy. Um, I'm less interested in snacking in between meals. And it's like my brain is rewiring, it's so weird. And you don't have to watch too many documentaries about the food industry to know that everything is designed to keep you hooked. And I don't want to give my money to companies that treat me like that, that treat me like a cash cow. And that I can, that my health can be used and abused for their profit margins. I just resent that, I really do. And that's one of the reasons that I've pushed back because I'd like to keep the money in my bank for things that I want to do, so that when I do want to do something for me that's a want, not a need, that I have that little bit of spare money to do it. And that means that when I do those little wants, those little treats, they feel even more special because they're rare treats and I savour them more. So, you may well be angry at this post because, well, why should I give up X, Y, Z? If you don't want to, you don't. If you can afford to live your life the way you're living and you can afford to eat the way you eat and the habits that you have and the lifestyle that you have, you carry on, you go for it. But if you can't, if you know that you can't afford to do those things, and you're still doing them because you don't know how to let go of it. Just do it gradually. Start with one thing. Remove it or reduce it. Give it time to become routine. Work on the next thing. Work on the next thing. That's how I did it. It took me years of doing little bits and pieces here, there and everywhere. And then before I knew it, I was leaving a more leading a more streamlined lifestyle that didn't feel so overwhelming because it wasn't really a challenge when I was just doing one small thing at a time. But you've got to want to do it and, and you can't force someone to do something they don't want to do. So if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. It's no skin of my nose I'm just offering you advice that you might want to take up and it may well be that you've been thinking like this for a long time as well and it feels overwhelming and you know you need to cut back on X Y or Z you know you need to change your lifestyle to a certain degree but you just don't know where to start start with one thing start small start with something that's manageable and then you start to realise that it is doable. You just need to push back against big greedy corporations, against a system that really wants you to stay indebted to them. Think of it like that. Think of it as you taking back control of your life and of your finances and doing things the way you want to do it and it feels like you are taking back a little bit of autonomy in your life and for me that's been good i'm less stressed i worry about things less because i don't feel constantly drowned by all these things that i'm supposed to do or supposed to buy or supposed to attend and it means that i can work less that, that, that there's less pressure to do things that I don't want to do. So that's, you know, that's my little bit of advice. And of course, of course, I'm not telling you you have to do it. I'm not telling you you're a bad person if you don't do it. This is how I do things. That's all it is. And I know there are people that watch my videos and think, you know, 
what you're talking about. And there are other people who say, that was a great bit of advice and I can now put that into my life and actually that's been a really good thing to do. So, it's just my thoughts on things. And don't be offended by me having an opinion. <laughs> Opinions happen. It's YouTube. 